Number 10. Richard Ramirez. During the 1980s, Richard the Night Stalker Ramirez was captured for a series of thefts, assaults, and murders that left the city of Los Angeles frightened. Regardless of all the horrifying proof heard in the court, here Cindy Hayden had fallen frantically enamored with the contorted chronic executioner. On Valentine's Day, in the preliminary, Hayden even talented Ramirez a cupcake with I love you frosted on top. In any case, when it came to condemning, Hayden had casted a ballot Ramirez blameworthy generally speaking. However this was not the finish of her frightening fixation and she needed to draw even nearer to the night stalker. Hayden applied for an investigator's permit so she could go to private encounters with Ramirez's safeguard lawyer in jail. Ultimately, her arrangement worked, and when the lawyer left the private space to search for a washroom, Hayden kissed and grabbed with Ramirez. Genuine wrongdoing biographer Philip Carlo inquired as to whether she was scared considering she had been left alone in a room with a chronic executioner she had by and by shipped off death row. Hayden said, no, by no means. He'd never harmed me. Number 9. Ed Gine. Ed Gine turned his disengaged farmhouse in Plainfield, Wisconsin, into a private jungle gym of awfulness and butchery. At the hour of his capture in 1957, police recuperated a wastebiscuit made of human skin, skulls on his bedposts, stockings produced using human leg skin, veils produced using the skin of female heads, and considerably more. The intention behind these terrible manifestations was that he needed to make a reproduction of his perished mother, who had consistently been a tyrannical presence in his life, Jine was shipped off Central State Hospital for the criminally insane and later moved to Mendota State Hospital. At that point in 1979, 86-year-old Helen Lowe's was found pummeled to death in her room in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Her eyes had been gouged out and her face had been sliced like somebody had attempted to strip her skin off. At the point when previous mental patient Purvis Smith was captured for the terrible homicide, he asserted that he had mastered everything about mutilation, murder, and human face veils from his companion at Central State Hospital, whom he respected significantly. That companion was Ed Gine. Number 8. Zodiac Killer. Heriberto Ediceta turned into a copycat executioner after his fixation on the Zodiac Killer went excessively far. Seda kept scrapbooks of the Zodiac Killer's wrongdoings, specifying how the unidentified chronic executioner killed at any rate five known casualties in Northern California and sent a progression of provoking letters to the media in the last part of the 1960s to the mid-1970s. At age 16, Seda exited school when he was trapped possessing a gun. In 1989, Seda sent a letter to the New York City police cautioning individuals would be executed, he at that point marked the letter utilizing a similar signature as the Zodiac Killer. His objective was to slaughter 12 individuals, one for each indication of the Zodiac, and he killed three preceding he was captured. One casualty was even wounded multiple times after she attempted to retaliate. Seda's rush assaults were so like the Zodiac murdering binge that police even accepted at one point the first executioner had returned. Number 7. Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was a chronic executioner and necrophile who killed at any rate 30 ladies during the 1970s. However still numerous ladies rushed to the court so they could respect him from a far distance. The media met the Bundy fangirls outside the court and one lady advised them, he simply doesn't resemble the sort to execute someone. One lady named Janet took her fixation on the chronic executioner so far that it even creeped Bundy out. Janet was known to gaze at Bundy across the court with such force, he told his protection lawyers that he accepted she needed to wear his skin. Bundy said, there she sits pondering me with her frantic eyes like a disturbed seagull examining a shellfish. I can feel her spreading hot sauce on me as of now. The chronic executioner had recently reacted to one of Janet's letters, and she was overwhelmed with feeling. She compassed back, I kissed, the letter, all finished and held it to me. I wouldn't fret revealing to you I am crying. I simply don't perceive how I can stand it any longer. I love you so definitely, Ted. Number 6. Angelo Buono. Angelo Buono was one portion of the sequential slaughtering team known as the Hillside Strangler, as police initially accepted there was just a single individual behind the homicides of 10 young ladies in 1977 and 1978. Buono and his receptive cousin Kenneth Bianchi grabbed, assaulted, tormented, and slaughtered the casualties who were matured from 12 to 28 and afterward unloaded the bodies on the slopes around Los Angeles upsetting and astonishing that Buono was viewed as a beast and condemned to life in jail. 
However, this didn't stop mother of three Christine Kazuka from succumbing to Buono. The future lovebirds initially met as Kazuka's significant other was in a cell close to Buono at Folsom Prison. Following her separation, Kazuka at that point stayed quiet about the relationship with the horrifying chronic executioner from her family until they got married in 1987. A representative for the State Department of Corrections said, I need to underscore that Buono has never had an intimate visit. He isn't prescribed to at any point have a sexual arrangement because of the idea of his wrongdoings against ladies. Number 5. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was an indicted chronic executioner and gay man at this point, this didn't stop female admirers overwhelming him with adoration letters. Dahmer was sent endowments, teddy bears, and cash from ladies from one side of the planet to the other. He even gotten propositions to be engaged. Teacher of scientific brain science Catherine Ramsland uncovered that occasionally ladies succumb to a chronic executioner as they see the young man that the executioner used to be and look to sustain him. She additionally clarified that others likely accept they can change a man as brutal and incredible as a chronic executioner. On July 22, 1991, police who looked through Dahmer's Milwaukee condo found a Polaroid assortment of exposed, presented, and dismantled bodies these were a portion of his 11 casualties. They additionally discovered human tissue dissolving in a tank of corrosive and a human head in the refrigerator. Bad Habit magazine talked with young ladies pulled into chronic executioners, they addressed if the fans were not upset by these shocking pictures of the crime locations. One answered, it desensitizes individuals. The shocking pictures get simpler and simpler to take a gander at. Number 4. Henry Lee Lucas. Henry Lee Lucas professed to have killed 600 ladies, despite the fact that it is accepted he erroneously admitted to a great deal of these homicides, and the genuine number is more probable three casualties. Lucas and his darling, Otis Toole, floated among Michigan and Texas to complete the series of murders. At 10 years old, Lucas was left forever dazed in one eye after a battle with his sibling. He was additionally missing a few of his teeth. This didn't anyway stop one lady who had gotten fixated on the chronic executioner after he was condemned to life in jail. Creepily, the lady concocted a plot to liberate the chronic executioner from jail by acting like a previous sweetheart he had killed. Lucas was first engaged with Becky Powell when she was as yet a minor. In 1982, he drove Powell to a field in Texas where he slaughtered her and dissipated her remaining parts. Shockingly, his female admirer had expected to act like Becky and clear Lucas of her homicide. A vile plot that won't ever work out. Number 3. Oscar Ray Bullen Jr. Oscar Ray Bullen Jr. was sentenced for assaulting and killing three ladies in Florida in the last part of the 1980s. Rosalie Martinez was a public safeguard and relief expert who had attempted to keep him off death row. Martinez said her first gathering with Bolin Jr. left her winded. She at that point separated from her significant other who was a conspicuous legal counselor and furthermore the dad of her three little girls so she could remarry to the chronic executioner. Martinez accepted that Bolin Jr. was guiltless and she lobbied for his delivery. She told columnists, I needed to break out. I needed to be adored like I've never been cherished, enthusiasm, somebody to put me on a passionate platform, not with material things. In 1996, the two of them marry at Florida State Prison before a TV crowd of 12 million. On January 7, 2016, Martinez made a last supplication for U.S. High Court to save Bolin Jr. from execution. Those endeavors were ineffective, and he was executed by deadly infusion hours after the fact at 53 years old. Number 2. John Wayne Gacy. Gacy Moss graduated graduate school as a distinctions understudy and later turned into a lawyer who had practical experience in criminal guard. During his school years, he started an exploration project and accepted the most ideal approach to get the chronic executioners to keep in touch with him was by acting like the ideal casualty. John Wayne Gacy was a chronic executioner who murdered in any event 33 young fellows and young men in Cook County, Illinois. Greenery had found out about Gacy's turned wrongdoings, and he clarified, in an eruption of motivation, I thought about what I may realize whether I move toward somebody like Gacy, in the pretense of one of his casualties. Moss at that point kept in touch with Gacy and presented himself as a youthful gay man, in spite of being hetero himself. 
Daisy took the lure, and the pair became friends through correspondence before they in the long run met at Stateville Correctional Center. The letters were subsequently distributed in the book The Last Victim. A true life journey into the mind of the serial killer in 1999. Appallingly in 2006, his psychological well-being hit a descending winding, and he ended his own life at 31 years old. Number 1. Charles Manson. In 2017, previous religion pioneer Charles Manson kicked the bucket of regular causes at 83 years old. He had been in jail at Cochrane State Prison in California since 1971 and recently denied parole multiple times. Manson's body was then incinerated and his remains were given over to his grandson, Jason Freeman. The cinders at last discovered their way under the control of a tattoo craftsman named Ryan Gillikin by means of his dear companion named Tony Miller who was a companion of Freeman. Gillikin revealed to Vice magazine, quick version, Miller got a small bunch of cremains at the spreading of the remains, Tony, Miller and, Jason, Freeman at that point had a run in over Miller selling burial service handouts without giving Jason his cut. It gets crazier, Gillikin at that point met Manson fanatical Patrick Booz who requested the words willy-nilly to be inked over his correct eye and an X on his temple equivalent to Manson had cut into his own brow during the notorious preliminary. Booz mentioned the tattoo ink to be blended in with Manson's incinerated remains and the solicitation was conceded. Booz stated, it's weird that Charles is a part of me now. Kinda creepy, I guess. And I don't think it will affect me in any way.